Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132, which introduces a lot of terminology associated with images. First, a few notes. This video assumes that you have already watched the videos introducing lenses and introducing mirrors. The content of these videos will be referenced in this video. So if you haven't watched those two videos talking about lenses and mirrors yet, you should go do that first before watching this one. A second note is that this video is very heavy on the vocabulary. As we said in the introduction to lenses video, optics has a lot of vocabulary and we're really going to see that in this video. By the end of this video, you should be able to define several terms associated with images and optics. And you should know and apply the sign conventions associated with objects and images in optics. So, optical elements, or combinations of them, can be used to make images. So there's a lot of vocabulary right there. Let's unpack this statement a little bit. An optical element is any lens or mirror. So a few examples include the lens in your eye that you're using to watch this video, or the aforementioned shaving or makeup mirror that many people have to help them get ready in the morning. It makes your face look a little bigger than it is. The lens or the mirror are examples of optical elements. So anything that's a lens or a mirror is an optical element. An image is the apparent reproduction of an object formed by an optical element or collection of them through the reflection and or refraction of light. So in these two examples, the person is our object. And the images are the image on the back of your retina formed by your eyeball or the image of your reflection in the mirror. Images can either be erect with the same orientation as the object or inverted, upside down with respect to the object. In the makeup mirror, your face is right side up and so the image is erect. The images on your retina are actually upside down. Your brain corrects them to put them right side up. And this is an example of an inverted image. Before we move on to talk about image and object distances, we need to introduce two more terms, the optical axis and the vertex. The optical axis is an imaginary line that passes through the optical element in a way that's perpendicular to it. So here on the right, we have a converging lens at the top with a diverging lens below that with a converging mirror below that and a diverging mirror at the bottom. This dashed line that always meets the lens or mirror perpendicular is what we call the optical axis. Looking at a few examples, we can see that the optical axis meets the lens perpendicular here in the middle. Same for the diverging lens. Moving on to the mirrors, we see the optical axis meets the two mirrors in a way that's perpendicular. The point where the optical axis meets the optical element is called the vertex. So the center of a mirror, we're using the thin lens approximation where we can just treat a lens as being infinitesimally thin, or that point on the surface of the mirror where the optical axis meets the mirror. These quantities are important because they, we need them to define image distance i and object distance o. In other texts, you may also see si and so for image and object distance or di and do for image distance and object distance. I'm just going to use i and o. Yes, o kind of looks like a zero, but be careful with your penmanship. The reason we needed these terms is because the image and object distance are measured along the optical axis from the vertex. And these distances have signs. They can be positive or negative. And these signs are relative to the path of the light. If the object is on the same side as the incoming light, then the object distance will be positive. Otherwise, the object distance is negative. If the image is on the same side as the outgoing light, then the image distance is positive. Otherwise, the image distance is negative. 
Note that for a lens, the incoming and outgoing sides are different. Light passes through a lens, so the light comes in one side and goes out the other. For a mirror, on the other hand, the incoming and outgoing sides are the same. Light bounces off of a mirror. These may seem like a rather convoluted set of rules, but it turns out that this is actually the simplest set of rules that works for all lenses and mirrors. So any other set of rules you might try to come up with will necessarily be more complicated. Let's employ these sign conventions in the terms of two examples, one with a lens and one with a mirror. To begin with a lens, let's say you're looking at a person about 10 meters away. Your eye produces an image on the back of your retina, which is about an inch behind the lens of your eye, or 2.5 centimeters. What are the image and object distances, including the signs? So first we define our optical axis passing through the lens. You'll notice that the light is bending here, so that's what we're actually defining as our lens. We'll talk about why it's not the anatomical lens in class. And this point where the optical axis meets the lens is the vertex. This is the point from which we are measuring our image and object distances. Now, the person of course doesn't shine off by their own light, but from light bouncing off of them which means the light is coming from this side, on the left. Since the person is on the same side as where the light is coming from, the object distance is going to be positive. Now, we also know the person is 10 meters away, so we would say the object distance is plus 10 meters. For the image on the back of your retina, the image is 0.25 centimeters past the vertex on the side where the light is going out which means the image distance is also positive, leading to an image distance of plus 2.5 centimeters. Now let's look at an example with a mirror. A can of some sort of bathroom product sits 30 centimeters in front of a flat, plain mirror like you have in your bathroom. You see the image of the shaving can apparently 30 centimeters behind the mirror. What are the image distances I and the object distance O? Well, once again, we define our optical axis so that it meets the mirror perpendicular. The can does not shine by its own light, but from light bouncing off of it, so the light is coming from this side on the left. Which means the object is on the same side as the incoming light, which means the object distance is positive and 30 centimeters, so O is plus 30 centimeters. The image, on the other hand, is not on the side of the outgoing light because the light bounces off the mirror and back the way it came from. The image is on the side opposite the outgoing. And so the image distance is actually negative 30 centimeters. It's 30 centimeters on the side opposite the outgoing light. In summary, an optical element is a lens or a mirror. An image is the apparent reproduction of an object formed by an optical element or collection of them through the refraction or reflection of light. Images can either be erect, right side up, or inverted, upside down. The optical axis is an imaginary line that passes through the optical element perpendicular to it. And the point where this optical axis meets the optical element is called the vertex which is at the center of a lens or the surface of a mirror. Image and object distances are measured along the optical axis from the vertex. And the signs of the image distance I and the object distance O are relative to the path of the light. If the object is on the same side as the incoming light, then the object distance is positive. If the image is on the same side as the outgoing light, then the image distance is positive. For a lens, the incoming and outgoing sides are different because the light goes through it. For a mirror, on the other hand, the, outcoming, the incoming and outgoing sides are the same because the light bounces. I know this is a lot of terminology. Maybe make some flashcards or use one of the resources available elsewhere in your homework to get this all straight. This concludes this video.